Hey guys, it's Melissa the Cupcake Stitcher. I want to welcome you back to my next video. Um, today is Wednesday, March 13th, and uh, I thought today would be a good day to update you on my stitching progress and life and purchases and um, yeah. So as always, I say that I'm going to make more videos and then life just gets in the way. So I want to thank you if you are a returning viewer. Um, subscriber and are coming back to visit me again and if you are brand new I want to welcome you so I call myself the cupcake stitcher because I love to stitch obviously while you were here on floss tube and I like to bake so um, if you follow me on Instagram at cupcake stitcher you have probably seen some of my recent cakes um, I've been getting into doing cakes a little bit more I used to find them really daunting and challenging but um, each time you do it, you learn something new, and so I've been trying out a lot of new things lately. Um, and you can probably see some of my cakes that I've done on Instagram. So, life updates. Um, I don't really know what's been going on, but I've been really busy. <laughs> so, I know I had second Pilates class for work. Um, that was fantastic. It was a long weekend again. It was like a Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um... I went to a play in downtown Columbus with two of my best friends. Uh, it was a charity um, production of The Little Mermaid, the Broadway version, uh, for Children's Hospital in Columbus. I believe it's called the Pleasure Guild, which um, donates money to those patients and their families that are on hospice and palliative care. So they do a production every year. It's at the Palace Theater, or at least this year it was at the Palace Theater downtown in Columbus. Um, it was Little Mermaid, which is one of my all-time favorite Disney movies. Um, and I actually had the Broadway music already. Um, I'm not sure where I got it from, but I, I don't have a lot of Broadway music saved in my personal um, stash, but... For some reason, I have that that music, and I love it. So that was a lot of fun. You know, we got dressed up. We went, not super dressed up, but uh, we went out to dinner, um, and then we drove downtown, so it was kind of a girl's night. Um, my one friend's husband came with their little girl, and then they left after dinner. But the, the show itself um, was kind of a girl's night out. It was pretty popular um, because the person that played... Ursula was a pretty famous drag queen in the Columbus area. Um, her name is Nina West. I know nothing about drag queens. Um, but she was fabulous. And of course, when she came on the stage in the first scene, like there was just straight applause for like a minute. Um, that got a little excessive. But um, the whole show is fantastic. Ariel was played by like a 17 year old. Um, I think she's done a few shows with them in the past. Um, she's got some singing chops. So. I mean, it was a charity um, show. Everybody that was involved with it donated time. They said it was like over 25,000 hours donated in terms of, you know, the costumes, the set, the production, the music, um, and obviously the cast members um, and those that produced it. So, and all the money, I mean, I'm sure some of it went to pay off certain things, but um, any profits that were made were donated to Children's Hospital. So it was a great cause. Um, they are going to do it again next year, and they already announced the show is going to be Mamma Mia. So, of course, uh, my friends and I are very interested in going to that because who doesn't love um, Mamma Mia and the music that comes along with that? So this past week, we had um, Crock-Pot Friday. Uh, it was my first official Crock-Pot Friday other than um, the Whistle Stop and Stitch Away Retreat Crock-Pot Fridays that we've done in the past. So I ended up taking a half day. My last patient was at noon, which I don't normally take a noon patient. So I was relatively busy, but I was like, I need to get down to Cincinnati. So I was like on top of my paperwork, like no, like no other, <laughs> not normally that good, but uh, I cranked that out. And then I got to, I drove down there. I went to keepsakes first. I got there probably about 3.30 or so. Um, did a little bit of shopping. Steph was, of course, working, so I just stuck around keepsakes until she closed up, and then I followed her back to um, her and Pam's house uh, for dinner. And unfortunately, not everybody was able to come. 
Candy, Lisa, and um, why? Candy, Lisa, and Tony. I was like, who is the last person? Candy, Lisa, and Tony weren't able to come um, due to some other, you know, things that came up because of life. And uh, but the rest of us, we had a fantastic time. We had it was taco night, um, which who doesn't love tacos? If you don't love tacos, there's something wrong with you. And we had margaritas, just fantastic. It's right up my alley as well. Uh, so we did that. We all brought in our mar market purchases um, and kind of shared those around the table. Uh, it was just a great time. I, I stayed the night, left relatively early because um, it was my friend's birthday this past weekend. And she wanted to go see uh, Captain Marvel. And she wanted to do it at like 10 o'clock. And I was like, listen, I'm going to be in Cincinnati um, probably gonna be up late because I don't get to see Pam and stuff and the whistle stop gang too, too often. So, and we were, we were up pretty late talking, but, uh, I, I convinced her to push it back to 11. So we went to 11 o'clock movie, which gave me plenty of time to get up, get moving and, uh, drive back to Columbus from Cincinnati. And then we went to lunch after, after the movie. And then I came home and I took like a three hour nap which screwed me over for daylight saving times, which was this weekend. Uh, but yeah, all in all, it was, it was a great weekend. Like I said, life's been busy. Uh, my brother, I got to talk to him a little bit on Sunday and we're looking at about a two week window. So probably I'm going to be real realistic here. By the next time I post another video, he should be home. Um, which is super exciting. So, cause he has been gone since the end of April of 2018. And, uh, you know, I video chat with him every once in a while, um, Facebook message with him. He does everything through the Wi-Fi. Uh, so it'll just, it'll be nice to have him home and, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and get into the stitching. I've got some whips. I might have one new start. I don't remember when I started it. So once I get to that in the pile, I might put that at the bottom. Um, like I said, I, I never go back and watch my old videos. And I don't necessarily write down when I do my videos. So then I don't know when I started things in relationship to my videos. So I have one that might be a new start, but I don't think it is. Anyways, one FFO, something I did not finish, but I picked up when I was at Keepsakes. And I got some goodies that um, were gifted to me and then some purchases. So we're going to go ahead and just jump right into this. So first whip on the stack. Now some of these um, I have written down. If you watched my last video, you know I'm doing the Magical Stitches group. I'm on Team Ravenclaw because um, I look great in blue. And that's not the only reason. I just... Yeah, identify as a Ravenclaw. And I decided probably halfway after my last video that I was going to start writing down the challenges just on a post-it note. That way you can kind of keep track of how much I've been doing uh, with each piece. And uh, I was kind of surprised by some of the numbers. I didn't add up all of them, but I did kind of look through them when I was um, getting all my stuff ready for the video. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty surprised by like, wow, I actually did quite a bit of stitching. So... Some of them have numbers, some of them do not. Uh, the things that I've worked on more recently, this piece of hair right here is driving me bonkers. Sorry if it's driving you guys nuts too. I'll just tuck it in there. Okay. Um, so some have numbers, some have don't. But yeah, we're gonna go through. So first whip is Sunrise by Rosewood Manor. You know that I wanna do Sunrise and Sunset. This is a restart. Um, so I think I've used it for some kind of restart challenge at some point. Um, I think what I've got in since the last video is another circle here. I haven't worked much on this one lately. Um, hasn't been calling to me. You can't even, I feel like you can't even see it on the camera. There are circles there. There you go. It's better light. You can see it pretty well in person, but not on camera for some reason. That's all right. Um, so this is stitched on 32 count Banshee and Crystal Linen, Belfast, it's Belfast, 32 Belfast, yeah, um, hand dyed by Stephanie, so, and all the threads are Weeks Dye Works, 
And I love that one. So that's where I'm at on that. This is the one I think might be a new start. I'm just going to go through it. Who cares? Uh, so I've worked on this for at least three projects that I've written down. Um, two extra credit assignments, one for scary animals, one while I was watching the movie. Um, Harry Potter, I think, number two, because I haven't watched number three yet, so it would be number two. And then a homework assignment for Diagon Alley. Al Diagon Alley. Um, said I was getting some flowers at the apothecary for a potion. So this is Summer and Jock there. You can see my totals. So 202, 285, and what is that, 254? Yeah, so some decent numbers there in terms of homework, putting up some numbers. This is one that I've been trying to work in a little bit more often if I can figure out how to um, because I want to get these done by the end of the year. At least the, the main four seasons I have winter and spring done. I have Stars and Stripes started. I have this one now started, um, but I don't have the autumn one started or the Christmas one. Those are the all the ones that I'm going to do. I don't think I'm doing the Halloween one um, just because I really like the fall one and I'd rather keep that up all season versus changing it out for the Halloween. So, um, so trying to fit this one in as much as possible. That way you can finish it before summer. Spring, I'm good. So this is where I'm at with that. So this is 32 count slate, hand dyed by Stephanie. Um, again, linen versus, I generally like even weave, um, but I've been working on a linen a little bit more and getting used to it. So I didn't, sorry, I don't know where that cut off. Um, someone just texted me, but this is what, I was showing and um, I said I did make some changes which is this color here so on the chart it calls for red coat blue or blue coat red what is it blue coat red by weeks dye works and I bought it um, I just don't like it I think it's too like washed out, which it's supposed to be, you know, a chalkboard. So it probably should wa be washed out. Um, but I like this better. It's got a little bit more punch to it because it's called watermelon punch. Um, and this was the color that was supposed to be used for stars and stripes, but I thought it was too pink for a flag. So it's where it works. I really like it. Um, probably can't tell, but there is not a ton some subtle variegation in there some more red red versus more pink um it's subtle but it's it's enough if you kind of look at it closely so that one has been lots of fun this next one is deer snow glow by shannon christine designs i have three of these i'm doing and I'm probably doing four. There's five in the series. Um, and so I use this one also for the Diagon Alley Challenge. I did 253 stitches on it um, for picking up jars for potions class. So I worked a little bit in the snow this time around. Um, some of the Krynik. I was worried that it was kind of light on here, but I think with the other colors, it's showing up pretty well. And it's actually showing up pretty well on the camera here. Hopefully it translates to the video. It should look exactly how I see it on the camera, but you never know. Um, so I did all this, most of the white stitching, I had already put in a little bit of white, but most of it is um, the Krynik. And it did just call for just straight Krynik. I did blend it with white um, so that it showed up more white sparkly versus um, I feel like the white Krynik almost has like a green tint to it with the type of opalescent thread that it's made out of. So that's that. This one has been getting a lot of attention. Um, I want to say, yeah, over 15, 1,500 stitches in this since you last saw me. 
just because it's kind of checked off some boxes. For some reason, I don't have a lot of projects that have black in it. Um, and we had to stitch for one of the extra credit assignments, um, 500 stitches in black. So this worked for that because there were some stitches down here that I needed to work on. The Time Turners, a chart from the 90s. I actually have no idea when this was created. This was my mom's um, old whip. There's no date on the chart. It's a sharing kids creations. I don't even think that's around anymore. Um, but my mom has not stitched since the 90s. So, and the Columbus skyline does not look like this anymore. So it has to be at least from the 90s, if not earlier than that, which meets the criteria. So it had to be created either in or before the 90s. So, and then the other one was a project that makes you moan. Um, probably, I think it was Moaning Myr Myrtle. I don't know, all the challenges are kind of described out. I just wrote brief little notes for myself on my post-it note. Um, and so this one does make me moan a little bit because it's my mom's whip and she stitches apparently different than I do. So I stitch bottom left to top right, bottom right to top left, generally. Sometimes I'll switch which hole I start with, but my X's always go that same way. Um, and she stitches the opposite. She, she, she stitches the bottom right top left leg first and then stitches the bottom left top right leg second so which is interesting so this is uh got quite a bit of progress on it i think i've worked well there's only two colors on here so i've worked the purple and the black um what's interesting about this pattern though is you can see the top half of the black is really saturated um, and then underneath is not quite so it's supposed to be a reflection in the water um, obviously because there's a little bridge there of the skyline so I think it's it's cool how like this top part has three strands bottom part has two strands on 14 count so it looks pretty cool um, you can definitely tell a difference even from way back here um, of the two colors so that one is, I don't feel like it's going to really take me long, especially if the challenges kind of keep opening itself up to this one. I think there might be another one in the extra credit for March and April that works for that as well. Um, I know I worked on this one. I don't remember what for. This is Mill Hill Ghost Trilogy. This is Alice, I believe. Yeah, sorry, I'm not taking that out of the plastic wrap, so you get lots of glare on there. Um, he's getting close. I say that, but there's still a crap ton of beads to do. So all of the stitching is done on this. All I have left is beads, primarily in the center here. So he has a ton of beads in the middle. I have not touched those, but his outline is done. The Oh, I guess I need to do the black eyes for the pumpkins and the ghost in beads, but outline, the stems are done. So that's where I'm at with him. Again, I have this long piece of fabric. Um, I probably could have left myself a little bit more, put it more in the middle, but I'll chop off this end and save it for something else. Um, so this is 28 count witching hour by Picture This Plus, I believe. So I got that at Stitch Away. I planned to do, to do all three ghosts together. Um, so I think it's going to look good. Next one on the list I do not have a picture of because it's an online chart that I got off of Etsy. It is a crown um, on 28 Count Mystic by Picture This Plus. Um, so I am converting... I think I've talked about this one in the past as well. It's in dark grays with like the outline in a light gray. And so I kind of reversed the colors and I added Krynik because if you know me, I like sparkle. I mean, I got sparkly wrists nowadays. I'm obsessed with bracelets right now. I don't know why, but... Um, 
I posted something on uh, Instagram about this piece and I said, I have a really hard time posting this because it looks like a really inappropriate picture. Um, but I am loving, and it looks better now that I have this line over here done. Um, it was looking pretty inappropriate for a while. But I am blended, I think I talked about this last time, but I blended a DMC with Krynik. Again, I just feel like I don't like the coverage that just the Krynik gives me. I typically use number four. I don't know if I could try number, I think number eight's a little bit wider. But I like the look that it gives if you blend it together with a DMC, like one strand of each. It seems to work pretty well. And again, I don't have numbers on that one, but I know I've worked on that since the last time I've seen you guys. I have also been working quite a bit on my Etsy stained glass Little Mermaid. Um, I've done it for three homework assignments and one random assignment. So sometimes events happen in the group uh, and you are challenged to do kind of an extra project throughout the week. You normally have like 24 hours to do it. And so this one was just, I think it was literally called like busy work or something. Um, but I've used it for to, to, to weapon. So water is a weapon. You think about it, you could drown someone. We had to stitch something that the Hogwarts victims were petrified with. So um, if you know Harry Potter, if you don't, or if you don't know Harry Potter, in the second book, there's a creature that petrifies um, several students. Um, if they looked dir it directly in the eyes, it would kill them. But because none of them looked it directly in the eyes, they saw it through a medium. Um, they weren't really petrified. So the medium that I chose was water. And then the last one was this week's assignment that I just finished this afternoon, which was to stitch in um, a brown color for chocolate that Lupin gives Harry with the Dementors now at the school. So six, six, seven hundred, eight hundred stitches put into this one. Um, it's coming along colors. I'm getting into some brighter colors, which is more fun. Uh, the browns weren't super exciting except for this. That is a brown. It's looking kind of peachy. Um, all it has to say is it has to have brown in the name, um, for it to count. So I don't remember exactly what that one was called. It was some kind of like light, I think it was like light golden brown. Um, but I've done quite a bit in like these lighter blue colors. So in her tail, and then there's a different color here and up here in the water. Um, yeah, so this one is starting to come, come to life. Lots of fun. The colors are great on the, on the screen here. Um, so I have that one. And then another one that I've been working on quite a bit is uh, Country Cottage Needleworks Snow Days. This was a pattern gifted to me by Heather Moore, the blessed stitcher, um, when I commented on her finish last year about how cute the pattern was, and she was like, I'll just send it to you, and she did. So this one I'm trying to get done. Definitely, I mean, hopefully winter is almost over. We're in Ohio, so it's going to snow again. I know it is, um, with it only being, you know, mid-March, but... I want to get this one cranked out so that I can pass it on. Um, so she wrote on the bag on the chart her start and finish date. Um, so I want to do the same thing, pass it on, and kind of see where it goes um, throughout the, the stitching community. So I've worked it for an extra credit assignment, a chart that involves words. There was 507 stitches on that. Um, we had to post our whip lists for one of our homework assignments, and then they told us to pick our 13th whip on the list, which was this one. And then the last one was a Diagon Alley, so we had like three parts for that. This last one, um, I said I was going to Ollivander's to fix my wand from some of the wood in the tree. So many people use that kind of prompt. It's nice that if you're like, I have no idea what to stitch, 
for any of these. People, like, you can post, and that's what I think I did with this. So I went to my um, house common room group, which is a separate group, but it's kind of linked. Um, and I said, listen, I'm not being very creative this week. I'm really, like, challenged by this assignment. And so I posted a few of my whips and said, is there anything that you guys can see that will work um, for the homework assignment this week? And I probably got, like, 10, 15 responses of different things that I could do. So... If you don't feel like you can do it, give it a try because your housemates will help you out. So I've made quite a bit of progress on this one. Um, I've got the tree done. I've gotten some of the snowflakes. I got the word snow done. I've got one of the little cardinals in there. And then I still have a second part to my homework this week. And I think I might choose this one. Um, so we have to stitch on a project that has an animal with claws or talons. And I have like no charts with animals, um, except for this one. It's got little, like three little birds. Um, you don't have to stitch on the animal itself, but birds have claws or talons. I don't know what they're called, but birds work basically is the vibe that I've gotten from the question board. So this one I will probably work on later tonight and get some more done there. Yeah. So those are my whips. My one FFO, I picked up, sorry, got an itchy nose. Lost two itchy nose. It's a real thing. Um, anyways, I dropped this off, or I gave it to Steph at Stitch Away to take to keepsakes um, to have one of their finishers finish it for me. Uh, so I finished this back at Whistle Stop. Um, I started it uh, right after Stitch Away. I believe last year I bought I bought the pattern at Stitch Away, um, finished it at Whistle Stop, and I made a bunch of changes to it. But this is my Madame Chantilly Kiss Rudolph Before to Start piece. So I changed out the red to um, Cupid. I think it's General Arts. Ninety percent sure it's General Arts Cupid. Um, if not, it's Classic Colorworks Cupid. Um, and then I changed his blanket, his nose, this little heart up here, and the presents all to uh, DMC Light FX, um, which I am obsessed with. I think I showed that pretty well last time, so it's got a decent amount of sparkle to it. I don't have any light on the front side of it there, but um, you can kind of see a little bit of shimmer. Not much. But it's super cute in person. Um, it's just finished with like this red velveteen type fabric. Super cute. Ten times better than what I would have been able to do um, in terms of finishing. So I am going to put this probably in my Christmas box next time I head downstairs. Um, and then this is, I think, my first Christmas piece that I've ever finished. So I'll have a little bit of decor next year. So that's super exciting. All right. Let's get into Stitchy Gifts. The first one is actually a piece that I missed last time because I had it in my little tote um, attached to a pair of scissors and I completely forgot about it. So um, this was from Jen Spoonaroonie Stitches on Instagram. She's super, super sweet. And she gave me this, I think it was a keychain, but... She said, you can use it as a scissor fob, and I definitely have. So I just took it off to show you here. But um, if you know me, I went to Ohio State for seven years. I have both my bachelor's and my doctorate from Ohio State. So I am a Buckeye through and through. So I am obsessed with this. I think you guys have also seen, um, I think I've shown my How Firm Thy Friendship um, cross-stitch piece that I did. So it was a chart that I made. It's um, in DMC black, and then the rest is DMC light effects um, in red and gray. Uh, so, how firm thy friendship? Ohio is the last line of the Buckeye OSU alma, alma mater, alma mater, Carmen, Ohio. So, and then the other one is. This little pin, she was going to make it into a needle binder, but it's got like a, the hollow back. So 
I just keep it as a pin on, again, itchy nose, on my little tote that Crystal gave us last year. And it says, oh, it's not going to focus. Cover my face. I don't give a damn for the whole state of Michigan. I am from Ohio. So that's another OSU song because we obviously do not like that team up north. So, and then more recent stitchy goodness. Um, so when I went to Crock-Pot Friday, um, I walked in the door and Katie handed me this. It is a needle minder. Giant Block O, Ohio State. I am obsessed. This one I am actually going to put on my Columbus um, whip because it's appropriate. So, big Block O North. Block O North. Block O Needle Minder. Block O North is a section in the stadium. Um, it's one of the designated student sections that like hold up signs or do weird things. So there's a Block O North and a Block O South. Um, and then the South Stands is pretty much all students as well, unless they sell their tickets, which a lot of times they do. Gotta make money where you can, because Hawkeye tickets sell for a pretty good price. Um, and then Katie also gave me this, which was a uh, needle market release from Poutini Poutini. Um, handmade buttons, pins, and more. And they are little desserts. So we got three different, three or four. I can't tell if this one here is actually a cupcake, um, but the little pin, pin set, um, which is super, super cute. She said she wanted to buy them um, before they all got bought up because she thought of me. Oh, sweet. I love those so much. And then Miss Delisha, Kentucky Sass, also gave me a, um, and I'm back. Of course, you didn't even really miss me. It's just made a weird jump in time and space. Um, I'm going to call this one the one with all the technical difficulties because I'm having a lot of technical difficulties today. But we're just going to keep rolling because if I start over from the beginning, this is never going to get posted because I don't want to do it from the beginning again. So anyways, what I was saying was I was talking about these lovely pins from Katie. And then somewhere in that time, I got disrupted. Um... I got these lovely pins from Katie Glass, one of my whistle stop friends. And then I was talking about Delisha, Miss Kentucky Sass on uh, YouTube, FlossTube. And she brought me a project bag um, to kind of celebrate my finish of my Day of the Dead Lady. And I just, I'm going to show it to you. So this is the, the Tula Pink fabric. And I am obsessed. Like, her flower crown is everything. I wish I saw a little bit more of her over here. Because um, I think she's got, like, this cool little braid going on. But this is gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, it's a good size. And it's got this um, bat and star fabric inside. Um, and then the little zipper pull is a moon and stars. Um, so very cute. Thank you, Delisha. I love this. Um, I just need to decide which project I'm going to put in it. I, I've been acquiring project bags lately and I'm getting the edge to buy some more. I really should probably just buy a sewing machine and teach myself how to do it, but do we, do we all need another project in our life? No. So that's my stitchy goodness. And I'm looking across the room and there's another whip that I didn't show you. And I don't know how I missed this one because I've used this one a lot. So, back to whips. Technical difficulties. What is this technical difficulty number three? So I had the text come in. I had the phone stop. And now technical difficulties. I completely forgot a whole project. And this is my Mucha Rapunzel by Pinky the Pink on Etsy. So this is a Hannah Alexander design. It's charted by Pinky the Pink. Ashley May. Um... And this one is good if I have like an extra credit or an assignment that I need to get done quickly because it has large blocks of color. Um, that being said, it is not an easy project. Um, it has tweeted threads, um, so blended threads, depending on how you want to 
what do you want to call those? It has the back stitch, which I have not attempted yet. Um, I don't have a back stitch, but it's got pretty some pretty extensive back stitching. Uh, it's humongous. So I've put in 1,207 stitches. 1,207 stitches in this. Um, from what I have written, written down, I think there might be more before I started um, recording. And that seems like a lot, but I haven't really made much progress. Like, I don't think I've moved my Q-snap. Um, 1,200 stitches, you're like, that's a lot. Um, and it is, but this piece is huge. It has petite stitches. Um, so it's got beads, it's got metallics. It, it's kind of a beast. Um, so this is where I'm at here. I think I had finished this panel over here and maybe started on this one. Um, this one has still has a little bit more, but I think I had a challenge that I needed like 500 stitches and I have maybe like 30 left in this section down here. Um, it starts to, it does this thing where it like fades from one section to another. So you can kind of see where it like checkerboards at the transition zones. Um, and so I have to do the transition zone down here for the dress that then should balloon out a little bit more. Um, so this is a whole tweeted section and that's basically what I think I've worked um, most of since I've last seen you. But I've used this, like I said, at least for three different assignments, which was a homework assignment, which told us to stitch something involving a skeleton. So she's human, so she has a skeleton. Um, a, and then two extra credit assignments, one that is sluggish, I just talked about how sluggish this one is. Like, I put 1,200 stitches into it, and I haven't moved my Q-snap. Granted, this is a bigger Q-snap, but because it's done on 36 count, I can put 1,200 stitches in, and it doesn't seem like I've gone anywhere. Um, and then the last one is a piece that's howling for attention, and I just, I really like this one. It's kind of an easy one to stitch on, um, especially, like, if I've had a busy day at work, just because it doesn't require a ton of thinking um, at least right now. When I get to, like, this middle section I had done here and I had done here. So it's just, like, fill in the blank. Um, there are a few stitches that I left out, but I just got to those that it's going to be for beading. Um, but for the most part, it's, it's an easy stitch when I'm filling in the, filling in the box. So, yep. All right. Now we can move on to haul. So I'm going to show you my couple of pieces of uh, new Nashville Market release um, that I picked up at Keepsakes. And then um, I did just get some other random haul. Some more things from Keepsakes. One or two things from online. So the first three charts are part of a series. And it is the Scary Apothecary by Hands On Design, Haberman Company. Um, and so I bought the first three. I think there's going to be nine in the series. I love the way that these are finished. Um, and what I would probably want to do is finish them like this and then make it into like a garland to hang on my mantle. Um, so we have Bitter Brew for a foul scowl is what it says on the bottom. I love the colors in here. Like they're Halloween colors, but they're not like super traditional. So we got that little bit of blue in there. We got the light purple. Um, and then it uses a little bit of Krynic, which almost look like the, the glow in the dark Krynic. So we'll see. We'll see how uh, those turn out. The next one is Bat Balm Zing for Your Wing. So that one's really cute. And then Broomstick Fuel. And I can't really tell what it says. Broom. Broom Vroom, maybe? Yeah, that's what it says. Broom Vroom. I like this broomstick. It's, it, like, unless you, like, really look at it, you just think, oh, it's a little fancy design. But no, it's a broomstick on the bottom. Just all fancy. So, how about those? That Those were all uh, market releases. And then I also bought the Witchy... The Witchy Stitchy Rabbit 
the old curiosity shop. Um, and so the night before I left for keepsakes and um, crockpot Friday, I was watching just keep stitching and Steph showed this pattern and she was like, I think this is really cute. And Pam's like, did you look at the picture? Cause the picture is really dark. Um, but like, if you look at, I think it's vintage, it's, it's supposed to be on vintage country mocha, which looking at it, you can't tell, sorry, it's super like plasticky looking right now, but that does not look like vintage country mocha in the picture. So I think it's going to be quite a bit brighter. Um, and so I went to the shop and I was hoping that they had one left. They had one left. Um, and then I took it up to the counter and Steph was like, you know, what's funny. And I was like, no, me. And she said, no, um, not really. That conversation just was made up, but she said they bought three copies of this chart at Nashville. She purchased one. I purchased one. And the third person that purchased it was Katie Glass. So unbeknownst to us, I mean, I mean, unbeknownst to me, like my whistle stop girls all bought this and we are probably going to do a sale. Probably not this year because Katie is only stitching ink circles as new starts. Those are her only new starts this year, ink circles, because she's obsessed with ink circles and she's amazing at them. So those were all my national purchases. Um, and then the other purchases I got from the shop, um, this is a needle bling designs. It says, get your tail to the beach. So you're going to see a theme. I have Halloween, which I just showed you. And then I have a lot of like nautical summary pieces. Um, I just was like looking through it when I got home and I was like, I apparently have a thing right now for the beach. Um, maybe because I'm done with winter. So get your tail to the beach. I did kit this one up. So the fabric I picked out for it is 32 count R and R reproductions winter brew it's not winters as steph kindly pointed out to me it's winter brew um i've used this before and i just thought it was funny because i was like i need a good neutral and i was like sort sorting through the box and um or the bins of fabric and i was just like no that's not right that's not right and i was like oh i really like that and i pulled it out and i was like of course i like it because i've used it probably on like three or four other projects already because I love R&R Winter Brew. I was calling it Winters. And I think it irritated Stephanie. But it's Winter Brew. Um, and it's a gorgeous piece of fabric. Uh, and so the blue that it calls for is Sea Glass um, by Weeks Dye Works. And it's pretty. Um, I looked at it in, in the shop because they did have it. But it wasn't like screaming at me that I needed to do it in that color. So I was just kind of searching the shelves and um, in the floss room. And of course, I went over to the Krynik and the Specialty Threads bin um, because I've already said once that I like sparkle. So I found this really pretty color, which is 029 um, by Krynik. It's number four braid. And so I grabbed that off the shelf and I took it back over to the walls of the walls of floss. And I found this, which is also by Weeks Dye Work. It's Isla, Isla Morada. It's just, I think like Island of Death. I might just be making that up, but it's gorgeous, variegated color. Um, and it works, where's my hand? I can't find my hand underneath the fabric. There we go. It matches that really well. So again, I'm gonna do a blend of this and Krennic. And then the other, for the words, um, I have not worked with Petite Treasure Braid, so I bought that. Cause I don't want the words to be like super bright. Um, I want the, the mermaid tail, but I liked the contrast there. It almost looks like it blends in, but it, in person it doesn't. So I want the words to be subtle anyways, but it's subtle with, subtle with sparkle. 
doesn't actually work, but yeah. So I got all that. Organize. I also bought, so Steph had a stack of fabric that she had cut for customers, customers earlier in the day. And um, she just makes a pile. And then at the end of the day, she normally goes back and puts it away. And so she took it back to the bins. Um, sorry, playing with my hair again. And this, so I was looking at the ones that she needed to put away. And I ended up just taking one off the stack and saying, just give me the rest of it. Um, I don't remember how much is left. Maybe like a fat, might be a fat half. Yeah, this one's bigger. I think this is a fat half. I also took the rest of the winter brew. One was a fat half, one was a fat corner. I don't know which one is which. Um, but this is Vintage Stormy Night, um, 32 Count Lugana. Um, so it's kind of like the Vintage Country Mocha. It's one of the printed fabrics. Um, I kind of like these or this for this series. I was considering using it for my Mill Hill Village series um, that I want to finish in an old window. Um, but I like this. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this yet. I may have to buy more of it. But it's really pretty. So, and it's Lugana. I love Lugana. Uh, the other pieces I bought, this is another hands-on design. Um, Wild Salt Air. I told you I have a beach theme right now. So you get all of the charts in here. You get, I like the big chart here. Um, I also like some of the smaller charts that you get in there. The little, um, little pin keep, little spool. And then I think that's like a needle book case is the, the wreath. So I bought that one. And I've seen that, I mean, we have all seen this pattern a million times. And I've, the more I look at it, the more I like it. Um, it's another hands-on design and it's, oh, say, can you see? I just think it's cute. And so I know that I could get the chart pretty easily, like on Stash and Loading or eBay or something like that, but I wanted to get it with the Velveteen and they had one copy in the shop. Um, with the Velveteen. Um, they had all the, they had like all the other ones, plenty of copies, but they only had one left of this. And I was like, if I don't buy it now, I'm not going to get the Velveteen with it. Um, and then I'm going to scramble to find something else. So I bought that. And then I bought the coordinating pins from just another button company. And this crab is my absolute favorite. He's so stinking cute. It's stupid cute. Um, so that was what I bought at Keepsakes. And then our friend, I think it was Sharon, messaged us in the Whistle Stop group and said that Dinky, Dinky Dyes was having kind of like an oops sale. Um, so I think the dye lots are correct, but like they're not full skeins, um, of the floss. So it's kind of like a test pack, um, of different colors. So... I ordered a set. I figured we'd go through them real quick and look at the colors. So these ones don't have names because they are literally just fragments. Um, but there's a yellow. They're almost like Mardi Gras colors. A yellow, a green, and a purple. Um, and then we'll go through and look at the names of these because I haven't done that yet, surprisingly. So I think there are, I think it's 20. But I might also be making that up. So we have mint. I should probably grab something. I'm gonna use my vintage. Um, except that looks really gray. It's called mint, but it is, it is a very blue, light blue color. I'm just gonna pull these from the middle. This is Kulaba, Kul Kulaba, Kul. Eva. How do you say that? Uh, I don't know, because it's not focusing, but there's that. This is Midnight. I can say that one. It's very pretty blue. 
I'm gonna just pulling these from my hand. This is Cabernet. Wine purple color. This is Heath. Very light purple. Aqua Marine. That one is definitely more blue than the mint. Actually, this one, it looks more green there, but it's it's a little more saturated in color. Uh, Dane Tree. It's almost like a denim -y color in person. Lemon and Lime. I have an idea of what I could use this one for. This is Tutti Fruity, which is fun to say. That one's highly variegated in color. Um, Shades of Wine. This is probably one of my favorite ones in the group. It is a very pretty red. Stringy Bark. It's pretty brown. I'm literally just throwing these on there now. Uh, Dusty Rose. Blue Iris. Cherry Wood. Another red that I like. Coat Slow. Did not say that right. Oh, I just dropped Cabaret. Kind of an ivoryish color. Um, Gidgey. Like a avocado-y green. Three more. Banksia. It's a very pretty yellow. Lilac. That one's easy. More purple. And Billabong. Blue. Actually, like there's one more. It's stuck on my finger. This one is Raspberry Ripple. Another highly variegated pink. So those are the colors that I got from there. Well, test test pack. And then the last thing, this was I think on either stash unload or stash unloading. I don't remember which one I buy things from. Um more hands on design because I love her stuff. I got a year in chalk. Um all of them for like twenty five bucks. So I got a great deal. So we have January, which is let it snow. Um, February is um, you hold my heart. March, may luck be yours. April, hello spring. May, plant seeds of joy. June, this is probably my favorite one, catch a wave. July, more tough technical difficulties, so I just had to delete a crap ton of stuff off of my phone, and now my phone's trying to restart because it's stupid. Um, so I was going through the Year in Chalk series that I have. I know you guys have all seen these. I may have been on June, which is Catch a Wave, um, which I said is probably one of my favorites, followed by probably my second favorite, which is Red, White, and Barbecue, and I've seen someone convert this to be red, white, and then they do a blue here, which is probably how I'll do it. Um, then we have August, which is Sleep Under the Stars. This one's super cute. And um, September, Summer Don't Go, which is what I think I was gonna use that, what is it, the lemon and lime um, one from Stinky Dyes. So it's not, the color's not showing up great here. It is very like limey color, like almost like a fluorescent. So that'll look good, I think, for like the fireflies. Um, I'll probably just pull things from my stash. I don't know if I'll get the actual colors. Um, I could use chalk, but I'll probably just use like a white. I'm using chalk for all of the chalkboard designs, but um, the seasons in chalk, but the year in chalk, I'll probably just use a white. Um, 
October is let them eat candy. Only be better if it said let them eat cake. Um, but candy makes more sense for October. November is thankful and grateful. I love the colors on that one. I may get ginger snap, which is what that color is by Gast on um, Gentle Arts. And then the last one is peace on earth. So I got those for a great deal. That's all my haul. It's all my whips as far as I know. Hopefully that's all my technical difficulties. Um, you know, we had some issues today. Some real, some real technical difficulties. But I'm too lazy to do it all over again. Um, hair difficulties too, apparently. So, thanks for stopping by. Um, never know when I'm going to be back. Just look for me on your uh, subscription page, hopefully. If you subscribe. And uh, I will see you guys all next time. I hope you have a great St. Patty's Day. Especially if you're Irish. And, uh... Just get a lot of stitching in. We'll see you next time, guys.